We have a number of external APIs that we're looking at here, our external projects, I should say. Um, each project is made up of markdown files as well as those open API specification files that we're going to uh, dig into quite a lot today. Um, just some examples I want to highlight. We'll be focusing today on this demo devices API project. Um, we also have a design library. Uh, this allows us to share or uh, reusable models across all of the rest of our projects. So if we have a number of models, and this might be a little bit what you're talking about in terms of consistency across your various uh, APIs is, you know, enforcing uh, not only style, but being able to reuse models and, and uh, make sure everybody's using you know the same types of models, the same syntax of models and all that sort of thing. So my design library allows me to share all of these models across my different projects. I also have a documentation um, project, which does not actually have a lot of content in it. You can see these are all empty, but what the point of this project is, is just to show off there's a lot of uh, configurability with in terms of how we display our projects within Stoplight. So if you are concerned with the end user display, this project is a good example of, uh, we can uh, reorder everything on the left-hand side. This is a good example project that has a number of documentation examples, change history guides, you know, getting started guides, guide how to. So again, all of these guides are markdown files. And then we have a number of APIs as well that we are listing here. Um, this is just a, a sample project, but it just shows that you can do different groupings of all of this stuff. Uh, you can have links to, you know, in this case, we have a link to our homepage directly, stoplight.io. Um, so that just an example of how we can configure all of that. And then lastly, we do have a just an example of a simple uh, external API, which is a Zoom API. Um, and this is a nice project to look at just because it's very simple. It has a single markdown readme file, which you can see here. It's very, uh, a very plain file, uh, but one single markdown readme, readme file and one single open API spec. So it's very uh, easy to understand from a, from a stoplight and a demo perspective. Um, you know, and from that open API spec, we render all of the endpoints like you would expect to see in any uh, open API specification documentation tool like, like we are. Um, it, you, we render all those endpoints, three pane view, you'd see all the requests, responses, everything that you would expect to see uh, from that open API spec documentation. This will take me into my demo devices API where we'll spend some time today. Again, in my demo devices API, I have a number of guides on the left hand side, uh, getting started, best practices, welcome, etc. I have two different uh, APIs within this project. So you can have multiple APIs within the same project. You could also have a project and have just one API. So it just depends on how you want to structure that within your own environment. Um, this has taken me to this list devices endpoint specifically here in this billing API. Um, and I have this list devices. Um, I have a, the requests, as I said before, I have any of the responses that have been defined for this open API endpoint. I have the body of this endpoint. Um, the last thing I'll point out here is we do have um, some versions of this particular project. It's not clear from this view, uh, but uh, these are actually tied directly to Git branches on the back end. Uh, but I can go ahead and select my V1 version of my API. I can also go ahead and select my V2 version, which of course has a lot more uh, uh, information. And again, this is backed directly uh, on the back end in this, in this project uh, by a Git repository. We have a number of different project types, but this project specifically is backed by GitHub. And one thing I'll point out here is, you know, as I mentioned, we have a number of guides on the left-hand side. We have a number of different APIs. All of those are stored in my Git repository. So my Git repository is my single source of truth. Um, we have a lot of customers that utilize their Git repositories for CI CD pipelines, for um, other actions. You know, we have teams that create the docs in on the, on the stoplight side but they're generating the open API specs from somewhere else, or they're editing them in some other editor like IntelliJ or you know some other IDE like that. So again, all of these files that we see here are the same files that we see here within Stoplight. We are pulling those files into Stoplight. Um, and again, uh, those two branches we see are actually mapped to the branches that we have in GitHub. 
once we log in, we'll see all of the branches that are available to us in this project. We have 15 branches there, um, but you know those those docs files that read me as well as those best practices getting started, etc. All of that is actually uh, in, within uh, GitHub. It's our single source of truth, and they're industry standard common file formats. Everything is JSON, YAML, Markdown, etc. To set the visibility of projects as well, like we're looking at there we can set that project visibility. So we saw those public projects. So like the demo devices API project that we have been looking at is a public project. We saw it from before we were logged in. We can also set these projects to internal as well as private. So internal would mean anybody within my workspace, anybody that's logged into my workspace can see that particular project. Private means only people that are explicitly invited to this project can go ahead and see that project. So there's a number of different options for authentic Indicating people internally to what they can see uh, within those projects. I, again, really nice for review, um, whether I'm reviewing internally within my company or I'm inviting guest users to those projects to check those out, give feedback, that sort of thing. Nice to be able to uh, segment that uh, uh, across your users. And before I... Um, Again, if there's any questions, you know, feel free to jump in at any time. Uh, before I jump into this particular um, demo devices API from an editing standpoint, um, I will point out again, now that I am logged in, I do have access to any of those branches on the back end for this project. Again, this is a GitHub project. We do have a number of different types of projects. And the best way to demonstrate that is just to, to go to add a project uh, where we can see all of the different project types. Uh, so we do have stoplight projects. Um, these are the same as GitHub projects or Git projects, um, except all of the files are stored within the Stoplight Cloud ecosystem. Um, so everything's stored within uh, Stoplight. You don't have to connect it to a Git environment. We still have multiple versions, versioning, collaboration, all of the things that you would have in a Git project, except for it's in that Stoplight project. So this is really nice uh, for teams if they don't have a Git in environment um, or if, like because of security, you can't connect to a Git environment or something like that. It's nice to be able to spin these up or maybe quick projects that you don't want to have to connect to a Git environment, that sort of thing. Um, we do also have all these Git integrations as well. We can connect to GitHub, uh, GitHub on-prem, Bitbucket, uh, Bitbucket server, all of that. And we can mix and match all of these projects as well. So we can have GitHub projects, GitLab projects, you know, all of them mixed and matched within our one workspace. Um, my workspace is mostly tied to GitHub, so I'll just go ahead and connect to add from GitHub. Um, in my organiz I have a couple of different organizations accessible to my Stoplight Andrew user. I'll just go ahead and use my own personal private um, uh, organization for the demo, um, where I have a number of projects that I am connected to currently, that, which you've already seen some of these, documentation, design library, etc. Um, and I can just go ahead and connect to an existing project like this. Or I could also create a blank project, depending on what I want to do. Um, by default, it will install webhooks into that project. So it will feed back any changes to that project into my Stoplight environment automatically. We could disable this if we always want to pull from Stoplight or push to Stoplight. But that is the default to install those webhooks. And the last uh, project that I'll show real quickly is just called uh, a CLI project. And a CLI project is a project that allows me just to push into that particular project. Um, again, it's nice if I don't want to connect into a particular um, Git environment for some reason. Um, if I just want to push into um, Stoplight, um, I'll just show a quick demo here. On my local desktop, I have uh, some documentation. I have some reference files. In the reference files, it's a pet store, which has some models, some open API um, uh, specifications. If I just go ahead and use this token from this project, I can just go ahead and push directly into that Stoplight project. So it, there's a couple of different types of projects. Again, this is one approach. If some of your teams are, you know, want to stay code first, they want to uh, push or or they want to put this as part of their CI CD or a Git action, they might utilize this kind of project where they can just push into Stoplight. You know, within Stoplight, we will host all of that documentation. You can review that documentation or utilize that documentation in terms of actually accessing that uh, particular API. Um, but it just create gives you that push only type um, action into Stoplight.